Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar today, Why Small Groups Are Great for Lent, Getting Ready. And my name is Paul Krenzlock, a staff member of Renew International, and I'm here with Sister Donna Ciangio from the Archdiocese of Newark. And uh, we're just really happy that you're here today. And the purpose of this web webinar, which is part of a series, is really to bring you into Lent, help you to get ready, and really focused, as the title says, on building and developing small groups in your parish as well. So, um, Sister Donna, why don't you take it next here? So everyone, we're, again, as Paul said, we're very happy to have you here. And, uh, you know, Lent is a, a very exciting time in terms of all the things that happen in a parish. Even though we're in the middle of a pandemic, you know, we're looking ahead to the things that we can do during this time. And uh, hopefully people will get vaccinated and we can move through this a little bit easier. But one of the things that we want to look at for Lent is how we make Lent really a very deep experience for people all throughout our archdiocese. And one of the things that we decided to do this year, I'm actually, if I could say it, a graduate of Renew since uh, I worked in a parish with Renew and then later with the International Office of Renew, um, is work with small groups. And many parishes in the diocese, in the archdiocese, actually have small groups and they do these kinds of seasonal groups for Lent. We decided to partner with Renew to be able to bring this more across the board with all of our parishes. And since Renew has such great materials and so forth, we thought it was a no brainer to actually partner together. So that's what we're going to be doing. And again, trying to bring more people into a deeper experience of Lent, even though we can't participate in our parishes in the way that we usually do. So Paul will give you some hints about the webinar and then we'll move into practical things about small groups for Lent. So as you can see, this webinar is going to be recorded. It's being recorded right now, actually. So you will actually automatically receive a, court, a recording of this in a day or two. And also we, we'd like you to engage with Sister Donna on this or with me and ask questions. So use the Q&A box down at the bottom of your screen and write in any questions you may have. And then toward the end, um, we'll respond to them. So uh, Sister Donna, why don't you continue? Okay, very good. So a good question is why Lent? We know that we have it every year. And this year it's going to be starting with Ash Wednesday on February 17th, which is very, very quick after Christmas. And already I've been speaking to people and they've been saying, you mean it's that early this year? And we said, yes, it is. So that's why getting prepared is so critical right now and thinking it through. So why Lent? So it's really, I, I love this image. It's really the church on retreat. It's the church having a 40 day retreat together. And we do that within our parishes. We do that within our small groups. And we do that in our families and in our private meditation. So we're on a retreat. It's a special time that we set aside. We do our fasting, we do our charity, we do our prayerfulness. And it's, it's a time when we can sit back and reflect. And as you know, with all the circumstances that are going on today between a virus, between political issues, all kinds of things that in our local neighborhoods or our local churches, we need to take some time to be able to reflect. So Ash Wednesday actually is the beginning of Lent and it prepares us for the first Sunday of Lent. And I like this image. It's we're processing into Lent. So it could look like it's the word process here, but it's really a procession into Lent. And the procession into Lent is each day we're climbing the mountain. We're climbing the mountain where we meet God. And so to take time to hear, to listen, how the Lord is calling us to change, conversion that we need in our own lives is such a critical time. So that's what our Lent is. 
it's a time when we really look more closely at what we're doing, how we're listening to the Lord, and how we're, we're offering our gifts to each other and to the whole church. So I like these three words, gather, accompany, and send. That's really what the small group is about. So when you think about how we gather for mass, how we gather together at each time we have um, an event, we, we gather together and that's critical. We talk to each other, we pray together, and then at the end of what we do, we're sent. So think about it liturgically. We're gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, okay? And we're accompanying each other as we pray together as a parish community. We, we listen to the word. We interact and engage with the homily. We engage with the prayers and so forth. And at the end, what happens? Now we're sent forth. And we're sent forth to make real what happened in the liturgical experience. It's the same thing with whatever we do in our family. We're gathering, we're accompanying our family, and we're sending out to do whatever we do during the day. We come back and we gather again. When we meet in our small group, we gather together, we accompany each other by listening to the sharing, by listening to the readings, and we send each other out to do and make real what we did here. So I, I like that whole notion of the small group, that this is a way for all of us in the church to be together and to give each other the confidence that we need to respond to God and to live out our baptismal promises. So spiritual accompany that meant then always has to be leading people in a deeper way. And so when you think about a small group, I know with my own small group, it's, it's amazing what happens in the small group and what we talk about. And last week we were talking about different things in our group and I, I came away from that and I, I just had to have quiet time after it because the sharing was so deep and made such a deep impression on each one of us. And we really understood that God was with us, that God was with us in the middle of our group and sharing. And by the way, the sharing was on Zoom. And still, just like today, that was coming forth to us. Pope Francis talks a lot about accompaniment. And he says this, he says, we need a church capable at walking at, of walking at people's sides, all right? Walking with people, not just listening, you know, an accompaniment on the journey so that we help people all along the way with what they're doing. And again, I, I feel with the small groups and my experience with small groups over many years is that's really what happens. We're listening to each other and we're respecting that. We're listening to God speak to each of us through each other. And that's what we're trying to do, trying to interpret, to listen, and to move forward with courage in whatever it is that we're trying to do. So accompaniment is very, very key. So when we think about, you know, why do we come together in the first place? It's really to make disciples. It's to help ourselves and to help each other be disciples of Jesus. And what's our role? It's to bring the good news to all people. But I find I can't always do that alone. I've got to have other people with me and people supporting me and people I can bounce ideas off of and people I can listen to God with so that we know that's why we come together. We come together to do the mission of Christ. And I like to think about it as something that's so critical today. How do we advance the mission of Christ in our time? So it can't just be left up to, you know, the hierarchy of the church or the pastor of our parish or the DRE in our parish or PCL, it's, it's not up to them to advance it. It's up to them to help all of us advance that mission of Christ, bringing the good news to all. So another thing that's important too is to think about adult learning, right? In our parishes, and as I look around our parishes, I look uh, work with parishes in different parts of the country, 
most of any kind of learning is really done for children. And they're probably the largest constituency that we work with in our parishes outside of liturgical uh, life. So when you think about that, it's really important to say, what do we have for our adults? How are we doing lifelong learning? So one of the things I've learned over the years is this whole notion of, you know, we have to help parents understand, parents who bring their children for sacraments. We have to help parents understand what it means to raise their kids in the faith today. But what do they need and how do we equip them? <clears throat> so when you look at the process of RCIA, we know that we've learned these things and there are many church documents on this that kind of support it. Adults learn, learn best in small groups and through reflecting on their experience particularly your younger generations today, they like to talk about their experience. And from the experience, you tease out where the depth is, where the experience of God is, where their experience that helps them grow is. Another one is this whole notion of adults being interested in exploring and growing in spirituality. Uh, we hear this all the time. People are saying, well, how do I pray? Or how do I know God is speaking to me? And it's such a critical a critical thing to try to help them understand, listen, and have that encounter with Christ. And the third thing is that adults really make want to make a difference. You know, they, they want to be heard, but they also want to be able to contribute. And meaningful work is key. So when we look at the RCIA, or the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, when done in that whole notion of small groups, uh, it really helps people internalize the faith and what they're learning and hearing. So how does a small group accompany? Well, I've put a few things here. I'm not gonna go through every one of them, but the, the key thing is God calls and we respond and we need other people to help us. So helping people to hear God calling them is number one. God calls us continually all of the time. But in order to do that, we need helpers. And so a lot of times for us, the helpers, <clears throat> maybe you uh, have a spiritual director. Maybe you have friends that you can share things with. But, you know, a small group is that way where we listen to each other and helps us along the way. Number three is very important. The mission of Christ in the church is furthered through the community of disciples. So that's what I was just talking about. But uh, priests who really promoted RCIA in this country going back quite a number of years used to always say, a church doesn't have a mission, a mission has a church. And so when we think about that, you know, it's kind of reversed of what we normally say, but Christ came, Christ came with the mission, okay, but how, how, did, it, how did he do the mission? He called together the church, right? And we'll hear some of those, uh, calls as we go through Lent. And we're called the same way. We're called to promote the mission, to be the mission of the church. So in our faith sharing, we know it it's, can be through many things, but generally through, um, through, through Lent, we take a look at the coming Sunday scriptures. Also, this is the other part too, and it's a little hard to move small groups this way sometimes, but um, our faith reflection should lead to action. And I always like these three words, observe or see, judge and act. And so observe, judge and act or see, judge and act means that through our sharing of the scripture, through our kind of pulling back the layers of the scripture and really trying to internalize what the scripture is saying to us, we take a long loving look at what's going on around us. Then we do and I don't mean judge to be judgmental, but we take a look at what's happening in the light of the scripture that we're reading. And we, we kind of sit with that for a while and then it should lead to some kind of action. So if we're talking uh, about um, food insecurity, for example, how as a small group or many small groups in a parish, do we band together to do a food drive? So that would be an action that would come out of, out of something that we were talking about. 
But it's so important for the small groups to really have some kind of an action. A lot of times the action might be personal or the action might be, um, you know, maybe it's uh, call someone who you haven't spoken to in a while or try to heal something in a family. Those are personal actions, but they're actions. And other times your action might be more public, all right, which would be like supporting food drive or other key things, um, human trafficking, um, any of the things that are around for us today, racism, et cetera. So you want to be able to um, figure out how your group or your many small groups in a parish can participate. And faith sharing is a form of prayer. You know, what's set in the group stays in the group. But it's also a time when we really try, this is not a discussion, but it's a time to try to listen to how God is speaking through other people. And that's so important for us. So the level of respect, the level of listening, the level of honoring the persons that we are in the group with is key. All of this helps really the baptismal call to discipleship. It really helps us understand that each one of us is called by Christ to do something and to be part of this mission and to advance this mission of Christ. So as you look at small groups and parishes, try to look at it not just as another activity for Lent, but a way of forming people so that the parish is seen as a school of discipleship. So we can talk something about that a little bit more um, at another time, but it's key. So when you look again at a small group, th these are the elements that should be part of that group. One, prayer, and not just a perfunctory prayer, but this, again, this idea that everything that we're doing, we're listening, uh, we're praying together, we're taking time, we're taking a deep breath, and that the whole gathering is prayerful. Another element is the notion of support. And when um, any kinds of surveys are done on small groups, the number one element is support, that people feel that they have a place to come together to talk about things that matter to them. Reflection and learning. I put those two together usually because we're, we're doing reflection on the scripture, for example, but we also have to do some learning. So in the Renew books and Live Lent books that we will be working with, um, there's very good scriptural commentaries in there and things that help us pull the scripture apart to make it more meaningful for each of us and each of us as a group. So reflection and learning are key. So we can't just talk about how do I feel about that, but what is God really saying to me? What am I learning? What does the scripture really mean? And so that's a, a critical part of any kind of faith sharing. And participation and engagement isn't just for the group, but it's how we participate in the faith life of the community as well. Are we engaged? Are we going out of ourselves to the best way that we can to be able to participate more fully in the mission? So I like to uh, take a look at all of those elements as a, a key part of what the small group is all about. These are just a few lines I put here. Um, you know, I asked a couple of people, why should you join, you know, why should anybody join a faith reflection group? And these were some of the things that people said, and I thought it was great. You know, a place to find support, people speaking about things that matter. A lot of times people said, you know, we spend a lot of time with our, uh, our work groups or whatever, and you can't really talk about faith in those circumstances. And so this is a place to do it. So it's, it's a, a, you know, very important for people. This is a good one too, to reflect on how much God loves and cares for me personally. And I know working with adults, a lot of times uh, people say, I don't know if God you know, really loves me, or I don't know if I'm worthy to be loved by God. But through the small group and through the caring of others and through the deep listening, people get that experience a little bit better. So again, these are some key things that are actual quotes from people about being in a small group. Now, one of the things, and I don't usually say this to my group, but what you're doing in the group is theological reflection. I think if I said that, everybody would be like nervous about it. But in fact, 
what we're doing by listening to God, by talking about our experience, by listening to the scripture, it's helping us find meaning, interpret and find meaning in experience. And that's so critical. So it's finding meaning in the word of God, finding meaning in the experience that I live every single day. And this whole notion of community is again, helps we helps a person live out the mission of Christ. So that's what we're doing when we're looking at the scripture, when we're sharing together, when we leave, when we leave with an action, we're doing theological reflection. I, again, I think that's so critical. Pope Francis, he, you know, again, he, he talks about small groups um, in, in some of the documents that he has. And, you know, again, in terms of parish life, because a lot of our parishes are larger, and even if they're not larger, we need that sense of, you know, everybody knows my name or being loved or being part of something that we can relate to. So again, Disciples of Company, and I just put up this book here, which was a, a really good uh, book on missionary discipleship, because we know that uh, Pope Francis talks about that. But again, we're missionary disciples when we make a decision to put others first, and we share our experience of the mercy and love of God with others. It's so important to think about that, especially in our time today, how we, how we honor people, even people we don't agree with, how we pray for people, even people we don't agree with, and how we take that step forward to be able to engage people, even if we don't agree with them. So it's that whole sense of accompanying each other so that we can do that. Okay, so that's kind of like a little bit of background. So now we're talking about practical things, getting ready in the parish. Now I'm gonna share with you my experience of being the adult faith formation director in a parish and the things that um, we did to get ready for our small groups. So here's what needs to be done. First of all, you need a core team to put together. Now in, in my case, the core team was the adult faith formation team. We would meet together and we would pray together and reflect on the scriptures so that we knew what we were inviting people to. Um, then we had to think about publicity. So publicity can be in a myriad of ways. So I've listed a few things here. The parish bulletin, mailings, Facebook, email, text messages, website, other kinds of social media that we have today. So whatever your style is, or if you especially can get um, some younger people to be your publicity agents there, they can come up with all kinds of ways to get the word out about the small groups. Another thing you need, and that's critical, publicity is critical. When you ask people to sign up, then you have to organize the groups. My experience, and I'll show you a card that we use uh, both online and physically in the pews of the church, um, my best way uh, to do that was to have people sign up by time. That seemed to work uh, in a couple of the parishes that I've actually been in. So we'll talk about that. Sign up methods, you gotta design, how are you going to sign up, when, et cetera. It's really good to have speakers at mass. And often I would have a couple speak together, um, you know, a husband and wife, or sometimes I had two uh, people um, from small groups just talk together. They felt a little more confident having two people. And then also uh, getting and training facilitators. So those are the main things that you have to think about. And of course, under that, there'll be a lot of, um, you know, how to's and what to's under that. So this is the way I think, and it might be helpful. Um, I use this uh, with some other of our parishes in the diocese, and they seem to think it was very helpful to them. So when I do something like this, I like to make a planning sheet, and I've had to put it, instead of doing one big long one because of the uh, technology and the, uh, you know, the PowerPoint, I've kind of broken it up a little bit. But from October to Lent, we would have core team meetings and we would have subcommittee meetings. And we let 
um, put the lines up by this is our project, this is when we're going to prepare it by, this is what is needed, and who's going to do it. All right, so again, that's the way I've learned to do some planning. So here we did uh, in October to November, we invited facilitators and we started to figure out when they would actually like to host a small group. Now, this especially has to do uh, with meeting face-to-face, -face, which you can do the same thing with Zoom. So we've done the same thing with Zoom. And then of course, if you have to figure out where are the meeting places. Some people really in the past have liked to live in, uh, meet in homes and others uh, like to meet on the campus of the parish. So you have to know what you wanna do. Zoom makes it a little easier. Everybody can meet you know, in a, in a Zoom room. So again, these were things, but one of the things we had to do was check the parish calendar, make sure if we were meeting on parish uh, you know, grounds, then we had to know that we had something available. So it's a little bit of that kind of background work. And then um, October to November, we ordered our uh, Live Lent books, right? Just to make sure we knew. And, and how do you do that? Well, you kind of guesstimate which, how many people you might have. If you've had small groups before, you have a general sense of about how many people you would have. So in January, we would start publicity through all those different ways. Uh, we would prepare um, publicity inserts for a bulletin. We also met with other parish organizations to invite them to be part of a small group or be a small group such as the choir. Um, we would make sure we gave the bulletin inserts where they needed to go and uh, again, meet with ministry leaders to help people sign up. So that's basically the way we plotted it out. And then uh, January, February, we would do a small group mailing or invitation for sign up. We had it all prepared, et cetera. And we had a team over there who was working on it. And then if you see in red here, I've actually put what the sign up weekends should be for this coming Lent because it's coming quickly. So a sign up weekend, I usually did two or three sign up weekends, all right, and also did it online so that people could sign up during the week, et cetera. Um, so January 30, 30th and 31st, and then February 6th, and seven and the re and you could even do it the week later but the only thing is you want to make sure you have enough time to sort out what everybody uh what what time everybody can actually meet so the other thing is we had um speakers at mass um we had people who were coordinators for mass so if we were putting cards in the pew with little pencils we would have people refresh it after every mass, uh, pick up the cards, uh, receive the cards, et cetera. Um, again, right now with the pandemic, that might not be totally possible. So to figure out a way that they could email or do it online would be great. And then these were the mass times that we made sure we had people at. Um, and we had two doors of the church basically, or two sections where people would go in and out of the church. And we made sure that we had people at each of those doors. So here you can see, we placed the cards in the pew, had the table greeters, et cetera. And then after sign up, you'd have to organize the small groups by the times that were selected. Um, today, we, there's uh, with a lot of people signing up for mass, um, I think it's kind of easier to do it online. And uh, some of the sign up um, formats that, that parishes are using are so simple, it's really great. So you'd have to make sure you organize your small groups by time, make sure your facilitator, you have a facilitator for that. So often what I would do is um, put down a couple of nights a week that people might want to sign up for. And for some reason, Wednesday, nobody ever wanted to sign up, but I had a facilitator ready just in case. Um, and then we would get, make sure we got the books to the facilitators and participants in various ways. We would do that sometimes by mail. Um, and Paul's gonna tell you that with, uh, with the Live Lent this, 
this year. It can also be downloaded, which is great. And so there were just various things like that that we would do. And then we'd also prepare an evaluation form to get back from the groups and the facilitators toward the end of the six week period. So I don't know, I hope that's helpful for you. So again, what I did was I put together, these are the actual dates for this year. So week one is February 14th to the 20th. And we, here's a couple of things that we said that we would do. And with the uh, Live Lent books, we always start the week of Ash Wednesday. So if you're meeting Tuesdays, you're meeting on Tuesday before Ash Wednesday, et cetera, because what we're doing is anticipating the first Sunday of Lent, right? Then the second Sunday, et cetera. So week two is February 21 to 27, three, 28 to March 6, four, set March 7 to 13, and then five, 14 to 20, and six, 21 to 27, because March 28th is Passion Sunday, all right, and the beginning of Holy Week, Passion Palm Sunday. April 4th is Easter, early. And, um, and then after that, we would uh, think about how we would plan a celebration after that. So that's my way of kind of planning, but I, I hope that's a little helpful for you. So this would be a type of sign up card that we did that was a physical card. And uh, you see, we have um, on Wednesday, we actually had two well-established groups that were meeting every single week. And so what they did during the uh, Lent time and during Advent, they used the materials that the rest of the parish was using. And so this would just be a way that we would do it. We had our seniors like to have um, a morning or an afternoon group. Sometimes we had a group at 1.30, sometimes at noon, whatever, but it just gives you an idea of um, you know a sign up something uh, a card to sign up if you will and then we also did some publicity and you know uh, this is something that we did to describe what a small group is for people because at first they were a little nervous about it and they were like well what's it about and everything and then so we just prepared a little something that explains the small group process all right, now Paul's going to take over now, and he's going to talk. About, first of all, let me just say, I hope that was helpful to you, and you can ask, you know, any questions of us. And then Paul's going to take over the Live Lent weekly themes. Great, uh, great. Uh, thank you, Sister Donna. Um, so I just want to show you the book here, Live Lent, Year B. So Year B means that in the cycle of lectionary readings, uh, Sunday lectionary readings, there's three years, three uh, years A, B, and C, so we're year B for this Lent. And um, just one thing, we're getting toward the end. I noticed there aren't any questions yet, so if you have any questions, this would be a good time to start thinking about those or writing those down. But basically, the way that Live Lent works is that each Sunday, there are reflections upon all of the readings and then there are questions. So you as small group participants and leaders engage in those questions on the reflections for the Sunday readings. And for each Sunday, there's really sort of a theme that runs through each week based on the gospel. So you can see them there. Uh, the first Sunday, the kingdom of God is at hand. Second Sunday, transformed by Christ. Third Sunday, zeal for your house will consume me. That's about our call to be zealous in our faith. Uh, fourth Sunday, come to the light. Uh, the passion, the passion foretold for the fifth Sunday. And then, of course, a generous and loving gesture by our God, which we're all invi invited to, to embody as well, to die for each other. So could you, there we go. So this format, uh, now there's a lot of different bullet points there. And that's just all to say that each lesson or each session is completely laid out for you. So you're offered ideas for an environment, just reminds you to do introductions. That's always important. Uh, just a, a brief summary of the focus. 
and so on. You can see and go down the list that it's all laid out. Really, there's a few things that are the core of it. So the gospel of the Lord, you're always invited to read the gospel reading for that Sunday and do some reflecting on it because the reflections really then come from the gospel. So after the gospel reading and reflecting, there's a, a reflection session on Old Testament connections that ties the gospel and the Old Testament readings together. And uh, you reflect on that. And then you see a further meditation where that's really specifically a meditation on the gospel and further reflection questions. Uh, of course, and Sister Donna talked about uh, the importance of action, that this is see, judge, act. So every session ends with an opportunity to reflect on the fact that how do we live this out? Because that's the whole purpose. How do we live out our faith? The, the other thing, and of course, is a closing prayer and a brief looking ahead. The other thing I want to say is that these sections sessions are flexible. So it doesn't mean that you have to do absolutely everything on this list. Let's say that your reflection on the gospel took longer. So you may choose to do only one of the reflections that follows that. Or maybe one of the reflections doesn't speak to you as much as the other. There is some opportunity to pick and choose a little bit with the reflections, but reading the gospel and reflecting on that definitely is key. And uh, there's some other aspects to Live Lent as well. In the back, actually in the introduction and the back, there's some ideas for how to use the book. So in the back, it talks about the structure and the flow and the timing. Live Lent's really nice too in that in addition to the Sunday readings and the reflections, there are reflections offered for all the, read, all the days of Lent and all the readings throughout Lent. So that means that you can use this not only as in, uh, groups, but also as individuals. And then uh, there is uh, or are a couple of feasts and solemnities that can fall during Lent. So toward the back, there's opportunities to do some reflection upon those as well. So here's some of the options then for doing small groups in your parish. We're assuming that maybe the baseline for most of you would be virtual groups. Uh, Zoom groups, or if you use virtual hangouts or some other means, you can do that too. And those would be uh, based in your parishes. Um, they're really easy to set up. And, and I'm gonna show you in a moment that um, Stephen from the Archdiocese and I did a little Zoom basics webinar for running online small groups. So uh, the link for that is actually the link that you see on your page. That link covers everything, and uh, but I'll get specifically to the small groups and the Zoom basics workshop in a moment. A, a second option that maybe a few of you can choose if you can do it safely is um, in-person groups. And of course, that all depends on the pandemic and social distancing. The other option is if for some reason you're not able to participate in a parish-based group, uh, the Archdiocese of Newark and Renew are teaming up to lead some groups. So you can see sometimes there that are options where you can simply sign up for a lead group, either by someone from the Archdiocese or from Renew. So at mo uh, Mondays at three, we have Sister Honora Nolte from Renew. On Tuesdays, Sister Terry from Renew. Uh, Sister Donna Cianjo has her group on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Father Tim Graff from the Archdiocese has one on Wednesdays. And then uh, Melissa Els, from Renew on Sundays. And go to that website that actually contains information, not only on all those small group options, but you can find the um, Zoom group basic workshop there and other workshops, which I'll explain in the next slide. Oh, well, not quite the next slide. I'll get to the printed, uh, the purchasing information first. So Live Lent uh, normally runs 9.95, but we do have 
a promotion for all the folks in the Archdiocese of Newark. And if you use that discount code, if you're entering online or calling in, it's uh, Newark Lent, and you will get 20% off on your books. You can also call for additional bulk discounts. If you order more than 100, basically, you get an additional 10% off. And there is, as Sister Donna mentioned, the ebook option. Uh, if you go to our website and our store, and the website address is right there, and you go into the product for Live Lent, you will see an ebook option, and there are different sellers. There's Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, iTunes. Basically, they're all about $8.95, and there's no discounts with that. All right, so here's a couple of other uh, workshops coming up. And again, just go to this page here. This contains everything. All those uh, small group options I talked about previously, the Zoom Basics webinar. And next week, Sister Terry Ricard, uh, president of Renew, and I will be actually le leading two workshops really on how to use Live Lent. So Sister Donna provided all the background about Lent and also the practical aspects of setting up small groups in your parish. For these two workshops, we're going to work specifically with how you facilitate in an online session. So the focus will be on online sessions using Live Lent. So we'll spend a time, you know, probably actually doing a, a little demonstration on uh, one of the meditations, the gospel readings, and we'll do some face sharing so you can see how it works. We'll use things like uh, breakout groups, so you can see how some of the Zoom thing works. And we'll give you some actual facilitation guidelines and tips if you're a small group leader. But this would be great actually for small group leaders specifically, but also participants, just to get a better feel for how all of this works. And for more information, you see our names and our contact information. Uh, just speaking from the perspective of Renew, before I give Sister Donna the last word, just say it's really a privilege for us to collaborate with the Archdiocese of Newark on this, and uh, we're really happy to do so. Um, you know, we learn a lot from you too, so thank you, Sister Donna, and uh, really looking forward to all of you just getting involved, engaging this Lent. Well, one thing I wanna say is that I think in some ways there can be a temptation to say, you know, let's just wait until after this whole pandemic is over. But the time is really now. We need each other. We need the church and, we, and supporting each other and living out our faith, supporting each other in that more than ever. So I really invite you to take that opportunity during this Lent. And Sister Donna, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you for that, Paul. And one of the things that um, I'm really amazed at is what people have done in their parishes throughout this whole time to make church, to make parish, to make liturgy really happen, you know, even though we can't necessarily meet together. And uh, it's been really a wonderful experience. And here in the archdiocese, in the building itself, we also have small groups going on uh, for Advent, which was very successful and also for Lent. So it's such a critical way for each of us to come together to uh, really understand our role as disciples of Christ. So again, thanks to Renew for working with us with this whole project and uh, we'll entertain your questions now. Yeah, great, thank you for that. Uh, we actually have one here. Um, if a parish has not done the preparation work since last November and December as detailed in Sister Donna's timeline and does not have an adult faith formation team in place, would it be realistic to think that the parish would be able to organize and conduct small groups this coming month. So Sister Donna, do you want to address that? Yes, I would say sure. I mean, I think if you put out um, on your website or the ways that you communicate with the parish, uh, you'd be able to do it and just say, look, you know, we're going to do some small groups for Lent. Uh, we have the, uh, the Live Lent book. If you'd like to sign up, 
you might use your normal way or whatever the format is or the platform that you're using to sign up for mass and have them sign up for that quickly put people into small groups and i think you could get it done you might not do the entire parish but you could at least get a couple of groups going so that uh you know something something would be happening yeah and i'd just like to say if if you want to talk it through um feel free to send me an email um i'd be happy to talk and work with that i'm sure sister donna would too is to assist, so please let us know. Yeah, Paul would be better at that than I in terms okay. of setting up the Zoom groups. But um, yeah, no, I, I definitely can do it. And you know, I think even um, if you're thinking about this among your staff, I mean, this is one way of of uh, really kind of pulling things together and, and having a deeper conversation uh, to make sure that you're doing faith sharing and using the live Lent with the staff meetings, et cetera. So again, I think, I think it's possible to do it. I mean, we're doing it here in, in the diocese. We just sent out an email to everybody. If you'd like to be involved, do this, and then, you know, we'll get the rest of the information out for people. Great. Um, I don't see any further questions here. So I'm just, thankful that you're here with us today. And again, you will receive a, a recording in a day or two. Sister Donna, any last words? Uh, no, just uh, again, to echo what you've said. And um, I think Paul, also you have the, uh, the pictures of the slides, right? Yes, that will be sent actually uh, in a PDF form, the PowerPoint will be sent along with the recording. Okay, that's so, very good. Very so, good. Again, thank you for being here. And, you know, this is something, again, as we've talked about, you know, it's a pandemic time. We're trying to, um, you know, keep things moving. And uh, even next year, we'll, we'll do more with Lent and some things with Advent as well. But at least this would be a way of getting started if you haven't already done it in your parish. Very good. Thank you, everybody, and take care. Thank you.